the problem of um, why we have this problem is because we have baby boomers retiring, we have jobs that require increasing skills, and the pro if this happens, the consequences are one of a combination of these things. Businesses will import workers with necessary skills into the state of California. Um, they will re relocate to places where skilled workers are available. And um, the result will be the reduction or failure to expand the California's economy. With any of these actions, California-educated young people will be left under and unemployed, and all of these consequences will have the biggest input, impact on our low-income and diverse um, students in the state of California. So um, the problem is not only the lack of um, individuals in the state of California that earn a bachelor's degree, but the time that it takes to earn a bachelor's degree. So this chart shows you uh, the four-year graduation rate and the six-year graduation rate at the UC, CSU, and private nonprofit and private for-profit institutions. As you can see, um, the six-year rate is higher, which would be expected, but when you look at the number of 1.1 million needed in 2030, and the rate, the rate at which um, our students are attaining their bachelor's degree, we certainly have a problem that needs to be addressed in the state of California. So the issue is, which of the following will happen? Will we choose door number one or door number two? We know the answer to that here at Long Beach City College and in the city of Long Beach. But door number one would be that we fail to raise the degree production in employable areas. And then what that would mean is that many young people particularly our low-income and diverse young people will experience un- and underemployment. Door number two, which is our option and the option we've been working on for quite some time, is that we will succeed in raising degree production in employable areas, and more young people in the state of California will have reasonable employment and a pathway to middle-class opportunities. So, the, um, we recognize that at that this board, you're very familiar with the Long Beach College Promise and the work that we've done. Uh, the Promise has been, again, uh, locally at the state level and then nationally recognized uh, for our work uh, in our partnership and really creating seamless collaboration across these educational institutions from Long Beach Unified through Long Beach City College to Cal uh, California State University, Long Beach, and then with the addition of the city of Long Beach in 2014. Some of the pieces that have really uh, stood out in the work that we've done is the coordination and sharing of information, resources, and services. Um, the, uh, specifically in data sharing and the ability we're, we're um, able to help uh, inform decisions at the, at the college level from the experiences of students and the high school level. Uh, providing smooth transitions for students, so really uh, establishing opportunities for students early on in their high school uh, um, their K-12 career to have college credit opportunities um, that then move them more quickly onto a pathway leading to an outcome uh, ultimately uh, which would lead to a career. Um, and then of course um, opportunities for that, that, that bachelor's degree or advanced degree. The, as President Oakley mentioned, uh, we were awarded in 2015, we were the Governor's Innovation um, Award for Innovation um, in, the, in higher education. Uh, the goals of that uh, award were really focused, as you can see, on increasing um, access for all students to higher education, leading to a bachelor's degree. So while the Long Beach College Promise supports a quality college credential, and that means many different things for us, um, through the partnership, we want to ensure that, that those options also lead to a bachelor's degree and a bachelor's degree attainment, which you'll see there. Each year, we do, uh, since 2012, we've done a broad faculty symposia, bringing all of the institutions together. This last year, we accelerated that by focusing on eight, uh, eight pathway areas what are high demand majors, um, as well as two areas of remediation to really focus on streamlining the experience for students. When we talk about pathways, we mean uh, a, uh, an industry or major themed area that starts to provide opportunities for college credit in high school that then seamlessly transitions them to opportunities at the community college and then further on to opportunities 
um, in degree programs at the uh, CSU. So it's that, that K-16 movement, that, that, um, that potential to move uh, more quickly to achieving um, your uh, attainment of a degree or certificate. You can see um, here we have listed those areas, our uh, high demand areas, uh, business administration, education, of course, engineering, health, liberal arts, and life and physical sciences, so our STEM programs. And then we have two remediation areas, English and math. As we brought these teams together this last year, we met uh, five times all together to really to get them to establish a plan moving forward. And so our objectives were to identify what's that common experience along each of the pathways. What data do we have? What do we know about that student experience and those milestones as they're progressing? Where are there gaps or what we were terming leaks in those pathways? Um, and then from that, what can we do moving forward to really address those leaks? So as we were talking about what we need to examine and where are we missing um, the development of those smooth and clear and guided pathways from institution to institution. Uh, we came up with this diagram, which we thought was a good visual showing you that there are many, many places where we can address issues that exist either within an institution, that their own individual challenges from institution to institution, and even at the end of our pipe, if you will, the leaks that we have in placing our degree attainment and our certificate attainment students into the workplace. So we created this diagram um, about mid-year last year for our work groups. And by the way, there's about 90 individuals that participate or participated last year. We have a counselor, a faculty member, and a manager from each of the institutions in each of the eight pathways. So the groups are very diverse, they're very representative, and they're having conversations about how to create clear, more clear and guided pathways in the eight areas that we chose to focus on this first year. So the things that we looked at that seemed very obvious to us that we needed to address are areas of curriculum, career exploration, sequences of courses from one institution to another, opportunities for work experience, the proper student support to move the students um, in a very efficient manner through the pathways, advising counseling, in some cases not having the program of study where we needed to have it. So we asked each of the groups to take this diagram and to identify where they saw the challenges or the leaks, and with that to develop action plans last year that we're working on addressing this year. So what we determined very, was very common among each, all the eight pathways was alignment of curriculum. That seems like a very simple thing, but it's not as easy as you might think. We need to be sure that our, history, our final history courses here at Long Beach City College really, really prepare the students for that 301 level history course at Cal State Long Beach. And we determined that our objectives don't line up as, as well as we like. That's a class that seems to cause some struggles for our, our students who transfer. So we know that we need to look more closely at alignment, and that's just one example. That's not the only place, and I'm not picking on history. Um, articulation, we need to do um, a better job at creating these agreements whereby students can take a course here that they get credit for elsewhere, and the same would be true with the dual enrollment or the early college credit opportunities, making sure that we have that alignment. Common programs, the one thing that was a very clear gap for us last year is when we look at education, there's preparation for education majors in the high schools, and there is an education degree at Cal State Long Beach. We here at Long Beach City College have not gotten approval for our education degree. It will happen this year, but there's a clear example of a gap, and that gap is right here in the middle where we don't have the articulated courses that we need to clearly transfer our students into Cal State Long Beach. Um, lack of concurrent enrollment opportunities, I will say, um, Amy Smith is in the audience right now, we have done an incredible job offering opportunities to high school students to earn college credit. Um, this last year, I don't know the number of students that we had in classes in the spring. Okay, around 300 students took classes, Long Beach City College classes, and earned college credit from the Long Beach, or from Long Beach Unified, or the Long Beach area high schools. And that was a great, that was a huge endeavor, but a great opportunity for those students. 
Um, common language, that seems so simple too, but we realize that when we're talking and using words, we don't really understand always what each other is talking about. So we've really had some good conversations within those eight pathway groups of what do we mean when we say counseling? What do we mean when we say advising? Long Beach City College doesn't have advisors, we have counselors, so you really need to understand what we're talking about when we're having these conversations. And we clearly know that we need to educate students sooner and earlier about what career and academic opportunities they have and what those careers or what those degrees will get them in terms of a job and whether or not that's aligned with what their skills are and what their interests are. And then we do have some issues with prerequisites. Chemistry is one of the big um, obstacles to students transferring into the STEM fields at Cal State Long Beach. Our chemistry class, um, in terms of the objectives, doesn't seem in perfect alignment with the classes that they have to take when they go in as a junior. So again, this was all exploring and finding what we needed to do, and we have done that. And so what we expect to do this year, again, uh, we have articulated the leaks, if you will, and there are a lot of leaks. I mean, there's still water flowing through the pipe and we're doing, we're doing a good job, but there's leaks that we need to address. Um, we're looking at how we're gonna strategize to plug those leaks. We're gonna look at the po target populations within each pathway and see <coughs> how we can best serve those students with the right supports that they need. Uh, we're gonna create some objectives for the year so that we know exactly what we expect to have accomplished this year, 16, 17. Uh, create some timelines, identify resources. This is the first year, or the first time we're actually gonna take some of that $5 million and ask what these pathway groups need in terms of resources to support plugging those leaps and creating those guided pathways. And uh, we will have some finalized action plans very, very early this year. We have four meetings scheduled again this year. So our end goal for this year, and um, this should make President Oakley and all of you very happy, would be that for those six discipline-specific pathways, because to our remediation, we will have very, very clear guided pathway maps for each of those disciplines, beginning in high school and ending with a university degree. Um, we don't know exactly what they're gonna look like at this time, but we know that's what we need to do and that will be our conversation that we have at our first meetings of the year. I think our first meeting is in October. Um, so our next steps are to continue the work of the eight groups. Um, I think when we started this, we thought we'll get the eight done this year and we'll start with eight more next year and then we'll just keep going. Um, it's taking a little bit longer than we expected, which I would rather do it right and make it be that we have very, very clear guided pathway maps. So we're continuing those eight pathways teams uh, we're looking at, at providing data to the team so that they know who's in their programs, what are the obstacles, what are their retention and success, so that we can articulate those clear pathways. And as I said, we have four meetings scheduled for this year, 1617. This is our steering committee. Um, actually, it's last year's steering committee, uh, with the exception of Nele Hemper, Hemper Lamar. Uh, she wasn't there for this picture, but anyway, I thought. You could see the people at each of the institutions, with one exception, that worked on this Innovation Award last year. So do you have any questions? Um, I just wanted to comment um, and uh, mention that, at least from uh, what I recall, this is the first time I've seen something this tangible. And I want to commend you. It's uh, something that I've been uh, hoping for for a while where, you know, it, it provides, maybe it's because your uh, science background, <laughs> and Terry, and we think analytically. Um, so kudos to you and to Greg. Um, as far as the, like, the specifics on the eight, eight pathways, um, that's very interesting. Um, I'm curious to see as far as the chemistry goes, is there, how, how do we uh, come up with that um, you know, outcome that chemistry is a weakness for our students, it sounds like, um, and I know I'm simplifying it. Um, that's one question I have. And the other question is on the students that were the concurrent enrollments in um, Long Beach Unified, the 300 students. Um, how many uh, did we outreach to uh, out of which 300 enrolled, and how can we increase that? Is, is there an effort to, um, do that. So let me address the chemistry one because sure. I'm very comfortable with that and I'll let um, Dr. Peterson talk to the concurrent enrollment. Um, as the discussions were taking place in the STEM group, which is life and physical science, 
what we discovered is that the Cal State Long Beach faculty were identifying um, our students as not being as successful in subsequent science classes, including physics and chemistry. And so the question was, what do we need to be teaching in our chemistry class? What's lacking that's causing that struggle when they transfer? And so what we're doing now is we're actually diving into the course outline of record and looking at the outcomes for our courses, comparing them to what is expected in terms of like a prerequisite for their courses and trying to make a better alignment with that. And, and even, it could be as simple as saying the things that we're emphasizing, you know, as you teach a class, you have a course outline of record, you need to teach, maybe in, as we know, to the course outline of record, but also what were the important topics that the students don't seem to be getting. So chemistry seems to be a bit of a block, and it's also a block in terms of having students continue in that field of study, which of course, we want more students to get into that area, the STEM area. So it just seemed to be something that we needed to look a little bit more closely. Also in the high school level, the same, the same example, chemistry in the high school and the success of the students that come to us in our chemistry classes. So it is a tough class, as you know. Um, we just need to do a little bit better job with alignment and focusing on the things that the students need to know as they transition from one level to the other. As for enrollment, um, dual enrollment, we work very closely with the district. There is more demand for uh, early college credit opportunities than, um, than we're ready to provide. So we work very closely with Long Beach Unified to ensure that there's representation from all of their high schools, um, that, we're make, that we're getting students who are best prepared to enter the courses. Uh, when we provide uh, dual credit opportunities, we want to make sure that the students are prepared to be successful because whatever goes on their transcript stays on their college transcript. And so there's been a lot of work into ensuring that there's support services linked to the courses that we're offering, that there's orientations ahead of time, students are very aware of what they're getting into. So we've grown to 300 and we'll continue to grow that, um, but it's a very much uh, thoughtful uh, process to ensure that we're, we're making sure students are in the right place to be successful. Okay, so how many people do we know, uh, do you know, uh, uh, that we reached out to out of which 300 participated in, um, or is that, if that information is not readily available, I mean, you can get back to me. So total interest was about uh, 600. Okay. And then we went through a process where we selected these students. Is that how it? Uh... Right, working with Long Beach Unified. So they okay. help in the recommendation process. And part of that's looking at their GPA, looking at the, their attendance, looking at some of their predictors of perf uh, success in their current courses at the high school. So if I were to have a member of the community or um, a student in high school that I can recommend this to, um, is there a place that I could have them go to where, and say, look, these are the qualifying factors? That would be the career counselor at their high school. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And then one last thing, since I have you up there, Greg, um, uh, do we have the results as far as the college promise for the students and the degrees uh, that we've generated out of um, the recent ones? Um, I don't recall seeing the, uh, the last year's or the cohort, so I, I, that's something uh, that's gonna come back to us? I, I believe that, um, oh, the two different pieces. So the general, the larger college promise, the on that data I believe is reported in the community, report to the community? On September 22nd is the next report card to the community, so the results of the, this is only a part of the college promise that you're hearing about right here. These are specifically the what the Innovation Award is funded. Right. The broader Long Beach College Promise, the reporting is going to be done on September 22nd at the Hotel Maya uh, yeah. when, when we have the College Promise community report. So we don't have that uh, information as right now? Uh, unfortunately, Report I can't on make, September 22nd. Right, which I yeah. can't make. Uh, so I just want to, for the benefit of the public, or just, it would be nice to see that prior hand, um, not just for my, my benefit that I can't make it, but it would be nice to... Um, let the community know and also for our own uh, right. purposes to understand how we're doing. Um, that would be, that would be great. Yeah. That's all I have, President Baxter. Okay, thank you. Uh, Trustee Malaulu. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Long and Dr. Peterson. That was a, a, a great report. Second to actually teaching physically being in front of the class. I think one of the hardest, most difficult things is curriculum development and identifying the leaks, 
So I can really appreciate what you guys have done. Um, that was one of my hobbies was curriculum development. So I'm, I'm very familiar. Um, don't be too discouraged um, by having Cal State Long Beach tell us what's wrong with some of our students that get there because I have often told high school students, high school teachers what's wrong with the students that I get. Just as when I was in high school, I told middle school teachers what's wrong. That's just the nature of education. We are always going to blame you know, those that came before us that had access to those students. Um, however, I love the attitude that you guys are taking in terms of identifying some of those leaks and being proactive and trying to nip them in the bud. That's great. Um, some of your biggest allies in this process would be faculty members and the actual instructors um, who are in the classroom and who can tell you not so much as um, test results or you know any kind of data that you can get from their progress but actual instructors so I'm curious to know who on your team um, I see that the photo but you guys have a group that meets if you are taking um, input from faculty members who are in the classroom not just here but also at Cal State Long Beach. So um, each of the eight pathway teams has at least nine individuals on it, and three of those nine individuals are discipline-specific faculty from Long Beach Unified, Long Beach City College, and Cal State Long Beach. So it's three faculty on each team. Most teams have grown to have more than three faculty because there's more faculty interested in the conversation three counselors on each team, one from each institution, and then a manager, usually a dean, and in most cases a dean from Long Beach City College. I think that of the eight pathway teams, we have the lead on five of the eight. In other words, we have had somebody from our team, from those pathway teams, rise to take the leadership role. Um, for example, Dean Douglas is sitting in the audience right now. He is a lead for one of the pathway teams. So all of the conversations about curriculum are conversations that the faculty are having. The conversations about student support are the conversations that the counselors are having. And the conversations about what we need to provide in terms of resources are the conversations that that's why we have the managers there. So one thing I would say to you with respect to my involvement over this last year, particularly with the Innovation Award, is to come to one of our sessions where we have 80 or 90 people in the room sitting at discipline-specific tables and listening to the rich dialogue. There is no blame being placed on anybody. We're just trying to figure out how we can best work together to serve the students in Long Beach. And for me, that is, I mean, it, it's an incredible time to spend with these people because they really do have the students at the front of every conversation they have. It's not like, why aren't you teaching the right thing in chemistry? Well, why aren't you offering the right thing? That is not the conversation we're having. So it's really a very rich, um, rewarding experience. And what we've seen is this last year of work is going to continue through the next year. And I do expect, I would love to be invited again by whoever can invite us um, to show you those eight guided pathways that we develop at the end of the 16-17 academic year. Excellent. Uh, Trustee Otto. Just a, a quick question. We've talked about pathways for a long time, but it's only been recently that we've talked about guided pathways. Can you tell us what that is and what the difference is now while we're doing this? Um, you know, I, I think the, so this idea about pathways that, that there's always been the talk about movement and seamless movement across, but it's really how do we help students navigate that so that, and, and make those, uh, that journey meaningful um, as they progress. Um, that speaks to one of our challenges of just time to degree, time to completion. Um, so there can be a pathway to get there, but it's not always clear how to follow. Uh, and so the more that we can guide students in that process, um, that we can help them make educated choices, the more successful they're going to be. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Board President Baxter, I have one thing to add to that. Um, on the heels of that presentation, I wanted to let you know and pass this to the trustees. Uh, see, I got enough copies for the trustees. The administrators can get it online. Um, 
The Department of Education uh, today released um, their playbook, the America's College Promise playbook, um, and uh, uh, this is a resource guide to colleges throughout the country. And as you would expect, uh, Long Beach City College and the Long Beach College Promise are cited throughout as examples of how to do a College Promise program. So I wanted to make sure that you had a hard copy of this given the presentation that you just received. And also, again, um, uh, the College Promise um, annual uh, community report uh, will be held at the Hotel Maya on September 22nd at 10 a.m. Um, we will certainly bring back uh, the report card. We will put it online and make sure that everyone has access to it. But that's, that's the date that all four of the partners will be reporting out to the community. Okay. Thank you. President Baxter. Yes. You mind if I ask a question? Absolutely. Sure. Um, so I'm trying to sort of visualize this guided pathway model. Um, when I'm visualizing, I see this map in front of me that this counselor or someone's going to suggest to me. Um, in this guided pathways for these six or eight disciplines, is there going to be some form of student support or checkpoints along this map? And that I know that's one of the, uh, the leaks that you mentioned earlier, but are there talks about that at the moment? Go ahead, uh, uh, Dr. Peterson. Yes, so um, part of it is identifying what communication needs to occur with students along the way. So what, when do they need just-in-time information to navigate? Um, another portion of that, uh, for example, in the work we're doing with uh, um, dual, uh, dual credit is to provide uh, built-in support for tutoring and other academic support that's needed as a student is taking courses as they move forward. So you're right, it's really thinking about uh, What's, what's the environment and, and the wraparound support that students need as they're moving forward, um, and really then communicating proactively to students how to access those resources. Thank you, good question. Okay, oh, Trustee Kellogg. There was a, uh, a grant on the Innovative Fund, uh, Innovation Fund for $5 million. Uh, is there another opportunity, or are we excluded from competing for it in the last governor's budget? Did he have money set aside again for this area, and we're excluded, or can we compete again for? So there are essentially two, um, two opportunities to get additional funding. Uh, one is, um, and I'm blanking on the assembly bill, but essentially um, Patrick O'Donnell and Freddie Rodriguez, uh, assembly members, uh, co-authored the bill and it's on the governor's desk. We expect him to sign it. That will create a, I think it's a $25 million uh, fund to uh, um, uh, give uh, grants to College Promise programs throughout the state. So we will um, be able to compete for that. Um, um, although the next chancellor may not allow you to do that. But, um, <laughs> but, because um, it will be distributed by the chancellor's office. Um, the other is there is another round of innovation awards um, that are specifically for community colleges um, uh, as the leads. Uh, we are not barred from competing again, uh, although depending on the parameters, we would need to be much more uh, uh, specific and as competitive as possible to, to show that um, we've, we've done more innovations because the innovation award recognizes innovations that have occurred rather than what you're going to do in the future. So um, I'm sure we will apply. So in the, uh, the number of, I read something where the number of California community colleges that have started in the College Promise in the past year has been. It's somewhere around, in California, we've got around 23 College Promise programs that have launched. Yeah, so that's, and I'm curious. And LA is launching tomorrow with Dr. Biden. <laughs> Very good for them. They're, they're, and ours started again, just because ours started and officially started 2008. As the College Promise has started in 2008, our partnership goes back to the 90s. Right. But uh, as we know the College Promise today, it was launched in 2008. Yeah, so anyway, I, I, a great report to see where we're taking it. But the point is to the next level is that you are constantly expanding, growing, and making it more, more effective. And so the data that will come out uh, later this week will be very interesting to see where, we're, where we've taken it. And I uh, look forward to possibly uh, competing for another, another grant. Um, hopefully the next chancellor will not exclude Long Beach City College from applying. 
I you, don't know. I'll be watching board meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of board meetings. All right, thank you. It's very Good sick. job, by the way. Okay, uh, 4.1 public hearing on the proposed budget for the district for the year ending June 30th, 2017. 